Hello, and welcome back to the Security Metrics Podcast. My name is Jen Stone. I'm one of the principal security analysts at Security Metrics, and I am very honored to have been asked by the PCI Council to come and do podcast episodes here in Europe, where we are at uh, Dublin, Ireland, at the Convention Center. And I have with me today Candice Pressinger, award-winning payment security leader and director of customer data security at Elevon Europe. Candice, thank you for joining me. Thanks for inviting me. And I know, I mean, that was a title, but I, I think people love to hear about the people who are involved in this industry. Can you tell us a little bit of your background and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so um, I'm very privileged and honored to be part of the payments uh, community and industry. I started out in it about 20 years ago. Um, I was actually originally a data protection lawyer and looking at um, what was becoming a limitation of scope and liability around payment security services that we were uh, looking after as part of another merchant's environment. And then at some point, um, as a huge merchant processing over 40 million transactions per annum at that time, um, the acquirer approached us and said, well, you know, we need you to become PCI compliant. Mm-hmm. And the business didn't fully grasp that the, you know, there was a, an enormous um, people, <laughs> process and technology program. I think they believed it was more of a, a legal derogation mm-hmm. and something that I could add a few lines into uh, our contracts and, and we'll be done. Mm-hmm. Um, but as it transpired and I, after subsequent investigation, it was quite an extensive program we needed to undertake. We had at that time 27 platforms, 80 third party service providers mm-hmm. and we needed to start from ground zero. It's a lot. That is a yeah. lot to start from ground zero on. Yeah. But um, as it happens, I I needed to learn more about it. And I became engaged with the PCI Security uh-huh. Standards Council. Um, I checked um, everybody I could find on LinkedIn with PCI and their job title. <laughs> and many of the people I met then are my industry colleagues. And I would like, I'm, I'm very proud to say friends today. And we've helped each other in various different ways as we've moved around the ecosystem. And I wouldn't be where I am today without the support of all the people in the community. Oh, well, that's a, that is a great summary um, and, and quite a journey. I, I, I know that we talked earlier today and I wanted people to, to know how excited you were about being in payments mm. and how fun payments is. Can you talk a little bit about um, the, the, kind of the community feeling, the collaborative feeling of being part of this industry? Yeah, it, it, it's really special. And as I touched on, it, it's about the people you meet and the support you get, the knowledge sharing, and that we can actually set aside our competitive differences to focus on um, supply, uh, compliance, focus on helping merchants. It feels like a real community sense of doing the right thing. Um, I started out at British Telecom. I was responsible for their payment security program. I became a PCISA, so went from legal eagle to um, technical bod. (laughs) Um, And I was very proud of of looking after the disaster emergency appeals and the the charitable um, programs that we have because I I supported the platforms that took all the payments Mm -hmm. and making those safe. Um, So I, I really enjoyed doing that. And then at some point, I was approached by the acquirer um, to come and actually look after other merchants and help them on their journey to um, security and protecting their customers' data and and really you know, helping them with my experience. And when I transitioned, it was amazing. Um, a colleague actually, uh, Tracy Long, who's now on the PCI Council uh-huh. herself, um, she was with uh, another acquirer and she opened her arms and invited me in and shared how they worked and what they did. And honestly, I wouldn't have been able to do half the things I've managed to do or understand everything as quickly as I did without that support. And that's that's the theme that I've been hearing over and over again this week is mm-hmm. the, the collaboration. Um, mm-hmm. And it's great to hear these stories. And I, and I'm really happy that you're willing to sit down with me because you are with an acquirer. Right. And a lot of the people that I talk to are are they're a little fuzzy on exactly what the acquirer does as part of the PCI process and um, the support they can get, how they can get engaged with them. You know what. What is the role of the acquirer in the PCI ecosystem? 
So, so as an acquirer, um, we're an intermediary. We take the payments from the merchant gateway. And we move it th- across to the brands and settle and then transfer the money. So we're the acquiring bank. So by default, we're part of a merchant's CDE. We are right. a service provider. Okay. So when a merchant want or needs to validate their PCI security, we will need to provide them with an attestation of compliance to underpin their validation. Wow, I wish you could say that like really loud three times for all of the acquiring banks that don't understand that piece. Mm. It's a question that a lot of my merchants that I work with have is, how do we get an attestation of compliance from our acquiring bank? And and my thought is, how? what? <laughs> because aren't you part, don't you want them to be PCI compliant as, as acquiring bank? Doesn't that seem like something that should be kind of easy. And I wonder if maybe they're asking the wrong person or if they don't have the right contact. And what's your insight into that for for merchants that are are maybe struggling with that piece? Well, certainly the remit I have uh, within the acquirers, I look after the level one to three merchants Mm -hmm. and we operate a bespoke consultancy practice. We work with each and every merchant irrespective of where they are on their journey um, uh, to whether they're just maintaining PCI compliance or they have questions. We have appointed um, contacts and they come directly to us to ask us for the validation or they have a relationship manager who will equally come to us um, as the data security team and ask us to share uh, that validation document. Okay. Um, so it really oughtn't to be troublesome for much. So, so it's possible that maybe there's just a miscommunication and they really should be able to expect that and find it. And if they're not getting it, maybe reach out to their relationship manager. And um, I haven't heard the problem with Elevon. I'm not saying, hey, Elevon is doing a bad job. I'm not saying anyone's doing a bad job. Actually, I think that the acquiring banks have a really um, important position and that sometimes just knowing like you said, it, this is another service provider supporting their ability to be secure and compliant and be able to meet their PCI obligations. A hundred percent. And if the acquirer is not able or, or doesn't provide that document, we contractually oblige merchants to become PCI compliant. Um, when we board them, they need to be PCI compliant or at least meet minimum assurances. And one of those assurances is that we will have someone to work with and to help them on their journey. And that document is part of their CDE and therefore would impede the ability to fulfill our contractual obligation. Right, right. And I I loved what you said earlier today as well about how acquiring banks, they they have as much of a vested interest in, in increasing the security and ensuring compliance as any other part of that kind of supply chain of of payments. Mm. And so what are some of the things that, that you do um, to help merchants uh, become compliant? Um, well, we really, really focused on m- helping the merchants being a partnership and customer closeness. It, it's very daunting, and especially if a, a merchant has moved from a four a level four merchant um, to a level two, either inorganically or organically, mm-hmm. and they're then in the spotlight for <clears throat> you know, PCI validation and working with my team. Right. So Depending on how much experience and how much help they need, we run, operate a program where we partner with world leading data security practices, QSA companies, and we're one stop for data, so all their data security needs. And we'll offer them complimentary consultancy, courtesy of Elevon. It could be a half day, a one day workshop where the the partner will work with the merchant to understand their scope, look at the priority areas, the highest risks, maybe come up with a prioritized approach and, and a plan that we will then manage and work um, towards uh, a security and validation with the merchant. But we handhold them from you know the beginning to unfortunately if they have a forensic uh, they need a forensic investigation, we are there with them the whole time or anything they need. So the prioritized approach, um, uh, some people might not have heard of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll be working with a customer that is very, they're kind of stressed out about the whole PCI process. Mm-hmm. As you know, when you first get a third party assessment, like you said, if you if you move suddenly into a level two or level one and it, and it's something that becomes a much deeper dive into everything going on, Mm. it can be pretty daunting sometimes Mm. for merchants. Mm. 
and sometimes they'll panic and say, well, we can't be compliant. And so they kind of throw their hands up and, and get a little stuck. But you mentioned the prioritized approach, and that's one way that that they can take steps forward. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think that's a hugely important point. A lot of merchants, they have a huge scope or they don't know where to start and they can either freeze yeah. and, and do nothing or they don't validate or become compliant because they're focused on this one bit that they can't do. Right. And actually, when you look at the relative risk that a particular area poses, it you know they can either agree with us to accept the risk, descope that area and validate but the prioritized approach helps them with a start point because it can be enormous. I mean, look how many security controls um, there are in the PCI uh, standard. And for a merchant that's new to it, having something where you can, you know, steadily walk to work towards it. And also it helps us to demonstrate to the car brands that the merchant is really actively engaging and is making steady progress towards uh, a secure posture. So... It's very important. And I like what you said about can we look at how they take payments? Can we de-scope some mm -hmm, of these mm -hmm. things? I know that a lot of uh, uh, merchants will take um, payments using solutions provided by their acquiring bank, mm -hmm. which which infers to me that their acquiring bank should be able to tell them, what are your data flows? You know, what is the SAQ possibly that you could use? Or exactly. do you need to... to um, comply using a, a report a full the full report on compliance mm -hmm. is that part of what you what you do uh, your services that are offered absolutely 100 percent. that is what the bespoke consultancy practice part of the team do um look at how many transactions which channels and therefore which documentation uh, they need to um complete to to comply and again that's part of if they work with a qsa partner that we help them um to access they will also work through the the um card data flows network diagrams and and make sure that they know exactly what they need to comply with and you touched on we have all sorts of solutions that help to reduce the scope of their uh, compliance. So we have point-to-point -point encryption, mm -hmm. tokenization, you know, various things that we, we have to help them minimize the compliance burden. Uh, and I love when people choose the point-to-point -point encryption or these other things that, that de-scope them mm -hmm. because then it, not that we don't want them to have security throughout their environment, mm -hmm. but let's focus on protecting that cardholder data first. And then the the security program, the broader security program, becomes a business decision mm. on on things that are, are outside of the PCI scope. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, allows organizations to have a little more flexibility in how they want to approach that broader view towards security. Mm -hmm. But for, for organizations, I, I don't know if you've seen this, but sometimes PCI is a great driver as a beginning towards security where organizations maybe don't have a, a comprehensive program. I 100% agree. And actually coming back to my sort of legal days and being focused on data protection and then subsequently um, being a GDPR practitioner and, and where PCI DSS is called out as a baseline um, standard to um, protect cardholder data, I, I actually think it's a fantastic baseline to protect all data. It, it really is um, a great place to start. And the fact it, it's obviously it's more customizable now. It's not black and white. There are um, opportunities to create controls that are be befitting your particular environment. But it's great to have, you know, the guidance, very updated guidance in, in PCI version 4, which is excellent. But if you put those controls in place, you are really quite a, a long way down the road um, to, to improving your, your security posture. I agree. I think it's a great place to start. And, Absolutely. And uh, uh, well, as you said, well thought out and a lot of defense in depth layers. Yeah. It's not just one thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, the requirements really kind of complement each other uh, in a very uh, organized way. And they map on to um, <clears throat> regula regulatory obligation. So it's a very good way to achieve a defensible position mm -hmm. in the kind of legal uh, <laughs> world yeah well uh it sort of related to all of this but maybe a sharp right turn you're also part of the women in payments tell me uh, about pci's 
program there and maybe some of the awards you won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, over the the years, I think we are starting to see a lot more uh, women in payments, and I think that's that's part of the passion I have is, is to extol the value of being there are so many roles within the payment ecosystem it's not just the technical security roles that say you or i have had it's you can be in marketing pr sales uh amazing opportunities and i think that women are not um as forthcoming when it comes to technical they think it's very technical right. and so i feel very passionately about being part of the women in payments global mentor program and helping others to see the various opportunities that they can have and the wonderful community we have where we're all keen to support and help each other progress mm -hmm. um and obviously, uh, I was very proud to be part of the PCISSC's uh, award-winning um, <laughs> podcast program um, to, to help others see uh, what yeah. we all have. And um, I think I just love it so much. I'm always thinking about how we can help merchants. And uh, one of my, my proud moments was, was last year winning the Women in Payments Award for Innovation for EMEA, yeah. <laughs> um, for how we are helping merchants to secure their environments and... Um, yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. Congratulations on that. And, oh, and it, very exciting to, to be able to talk about it. People don't even know that that's, that's something available. So this mentoring mm. and um, bringing women along in the payments industry. And mm. I, as I, I speak with people at the, at the community meetings and other places, the, the number of um, welcoming inlets for people who are interested in this industry mm. uh pci really has open arms for for people and that, that that's the magical thing about it i don't think people outside it can actually and i want people to come in can mm. actually appreciate just how special it is it is a tight-knit community and you give and you get you know and i think if anybody shows an interest in it and they go well i don't think i could do that because i have no experience mm. it, i think it's incumbent upon all of us to say if you have the right attitude and the interest you 100% can do do this and you have it's it's something i think we're all passionate about everything ends in a payment and we want to help people um do it safely and you know it's just an ever evolving environment always new and interesting how we've moved from zip zap machines mm -hmm. to cloud and you know it brings challenges but it's such an opportunity and I, I, that's what i like to promote uh, absolutely absolutely so um uh, any final um Kind of comments on the acquirer as part of the PCI ecosystem, uh, just to kind of wrap us up. Yeah, I think people possibly aren't uh, as clear on the role of the acquirer, but we are a, a key part of the uh, CDE for any merchant. Um, we are here to 100% help um, with any um, inquiries, validation needs, um, and we're your friends, merchants' friends, and we we can answer questions and um, like to think that we're a, a trustworthy partner when it comes to selecting assessors and helping them understand what um, products and services they they could use to reduce their um, you know compliance burdens. So, yeah, I think that's what we do. Oh well, thank you. That has been very helpful, and I know that people are going to appreciate understanding more about the acquire and. And uh, learning about you because uh, I went and listened to your podcast and I thought it was pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. To watch more episodes of Security Metrics Podcast, click on the box on the left. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. See you on the slopes.